Rent has spiralled out of control in the city and people with full-time jobs are now living on the street. Hello, Keen. It's very hard to stay motivated. I'm nearly three years at this now. And um, going up to 30, like, and, you know, I've had my teeth broken, my, I need two root canals, I've had my ribs broken. I've been nearly murdered at least three times. Yeah, it's proper dangerous. It's I'm hitting 30 and I've never actually been able to start my life. You know, I grew up in care. I have no addictions. Um, I do drink, but very rarely and not when I work. And I work usually five to six days a week. I work in construction, you know, building apartment blocks and houses. And, uh, you know, I don't have one. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of ironic, uh, it really does sum up this island, I think. Well, my routine for most of it has been um, to uh, have an alarm set on the phone for about half five, six. Uh, you get up, uh, you roll up the sleeping bag, you pack everything up, you roll and get the bus to wherever site you're going to, and then um, you do your day's labour. You come back and uh, you um, have to try find somewhere to charge your phone. So you might get into a Starbucks um, during the COVID, that was awkward. Um, you can, um, there's a couple of bus stops where you can charge your phone. The point is to get enough battery that the alarm will go off in the morning the next day. And then as soon as that battery's charged a bit, you wait till it's dark, you lie down and you go to sleep. Get off the cold hard ground, work hard, fucking wander about, and then hit the cold hard ground again with a cup of tea and a sandwich and rinse repeat. Slave life, like. Took the chance going into a hostel there last year. Didn't work out in the end, but uh, while I was there, I managed to get work. When I first started, I was just basically a labourer. Nowadays, I take on more technical work, capping, we do green roofing. Quite a few of my colleagues say on stormy days might book me into a hotel for a day or two. Um, my boss in particular, you know, kind of looked out for me that, in that regard. So I'm quite a proud person by nature. You know, I believe in the more you contribute, the more you gain. I wouldn't be the type of person to kind of reach out or ask for help. Last year, I had difficulties getting a MyGovID account. If I get a license, you know, there's a possibility of a work vehicle, but uh, with no address. So my main goal in life is to one day have uh, five acres and uh, you know live out in the country try to be a bit self-sufficient obviously a very long-term goal in this island true thing about being a rough sleeper is you know I don't do drugs I've no criminal record I've no addictions no matter how you got there you realize you're literally just an outcast like life on the street has taken a heavy toll on Cain but things are starting to look up a bit. I'm off the streets five, six weeks now. Luckily enough, uh, my boss, he spotted his converter truck and done deal. And uh, yeah, uh, we managed to get it. It's definitely not luxurious. I don't have an address for it or any crack like that, but it's a step up from waking up soaked, you know. Like your body gets used to one way or the other. So if you're on the streets for ages, you have adrenaline and all that crack, you don't notice any pains, you don't notice any illnesses or any crack like that. But once you hit a bed and you're in a bit of um, you know, an idle position, it all comes on top of you. Suddenly you're riddled <laughs> with pneumonia, weak spells, you know, you can't sleep at all. Um, or you're sleeping constantly, it's one or the other, and you're all feverish and suddenly you're getting loads of different infections. And uh, I don't know, your body stops you know, working so hard to support itself. And uh, all the aches and pains take a while to get over. I had big plans, you know, I was going to get back into cooking and, uh, you know, fucking get everything sorted like that, you know, fucking shower every day, you know, live your life. And uh, fucking, um, yeah, just realised I never really have time. <laughs> You know, you'd be up so early, flying out, and then the bus, 
you know, it's iffy. But um, sometimes it shows, sometimes it doesn't. And when it does show, it still take you ages to get in and out. So, that's not. It's not how normal people are able to fucking manage the time to cook, like. It's going to have to be a life lesson somewhere down the line. But, but other than that, I mean, it's pretty cool. You know, it's a private area, so you don't have to worry about getting robbed or stabbed or any crack like that in your sleep. Just work every day, save the cash. Realise you can't save the cash and just live in the truck. Just expected more. You know, I feel like now I'm just you know, but working and coming back, and, you know, all my cash goes to the expenses, same as everyone else, cost of living, like. I don't know, it feels no point, there's something I'm working for. You know, some long distance goal, like five acres or whatever like that. That would be the ultimate dream, like, but I don't see myself ever having a shot at that. Yeah, I don't know, it just seems I'm working to buy smokes and rolls in the shop when I'm hungry. After six weeks of being off the streets, Cian has handed back the keys to the truck. I got frustrated and I quit my job. And uh, I left the truck and I started um, wandering again. I, uh, you know, it'll take a while to get used to rough sleeping again. I got frustrated about not being able to get my license not been able to get tax back and uh, use basic government services. So I ended up going down the long chain of complaints <laughs> where I rang the ombudsman, I rang the different departments and uh, you know, I got sent to different departments who sent me back to the same departments who sent me to them. Wouldn't hack it anymore, I thought. I'd rather just disengage. At the same time, like I'm working in construction, you know, I'm building apartments and houses. You know, naturally enough, with hundreds of other lads doing the same thing, like, but... It kind of annoys me in a way that I'm putting so much effort to make these houses that I'll never afford. <laughs> Does that make any sense? So... The fact that... I don't know, it was, you know, it was a straw that added to an already pet peeve that was already there and, you know, was, I don't feel like I'm getting much out of um, my current living situation, so. I mean, you go to work now, better and you, you do your job, but sitting in that truck or spending ages trying to get to it, and, you know, and it's just, I don't know. Maybe I'm entitled in a way, because I expect too much too soon. But... One thing I am thinking about doing, though, is having a shave. Uh, be a uh, day three of this documentary series, suddenly I'm freshly shaved, and then one's like, oh, that lad, his life's turned around completely. Like, look at him now, he's all suave. Yeah. Silly Baldi, but what do you do? <laughs> Can't do it anymore. Work full time, can't find somewhere to live. No, fuck you. Never once had a fucking life. Ever. It was always look to the future, look to the future. I've been through every fucking system in this state. I didn't choose it. I didn't choose to be born, didn't choose to go into care, didn't choose to live in residential, didn't fucking choose to get near stabbed about 50 times just for existing. Didn't choose to fucking starve half the time. Didn't choose to be smelly. Didn't fucking choose any of that. So sure, yeah, sure, what are you meant to do? Oh, he's being too loud. Look at him in a public street. Ring the guards, he's a disturbance. 
Simply because I don't want to look her here. It's an aesthetics reason. Sure, you bother all the fucking, you know, better people who are just trying to fucking spend their day drinking their fucking organic coffees right where you used to fucking sleep, like. Or... What is the answer? Just, you're, you're born to be fucked over, that's it. I don't know. I really don't. You know? So I don't know where I'll go now, but I'll fucking pick someone. Somewhere where I can just fucking sit and mind my own business and try to fucking think of a way out of this hell. quite an uphill battle but you know when you have too many knocks you can pop and uh, yeah now I popped um, yeah. <coughs> the other way when you have a viciously really bad headache um, like I get them on the left side and, uh, and then it just feels like something in your head is like physically popping and then the headache disappears and that's that's kind of what I get brain pops when I get too stressed so um, yeah so uh, I had one of them and now I'm a bit calm so. so I came up with a new plan I might as well try and fucking go to a different land where I'll have better odds of improving my life so I'm looking at England which is very odd considering I'm an Irish man that I'd have better odds of improving my life there than I would here with cheaper rent and uh, the wages are a bit shitter for my field now, but the fact that the rent's drastically feckin' cheaper means that my quality of life would be much better. I honestly don't think things will ever improve here, to the point where um, it would have been worth it to wait it out, you know? So I think it's best to just leave and try to find greener pastures. I mean, I'm not fucking sleeping on the ground anymore, you know? <laughs> so. I have to do something to better my life. <laughs>